Hey guys, it's Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. Thank you for once again coming back to view my channel. If you are new here, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome home, y'all. If you have not already done so, what are you waiting on? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And for the 1,504 of you that have subscribed to my YouTube page, thank you so, 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 so much. I don't even have a lot of subscribers, but for me, I do. This is so dope. And I'm sorry that some of the comments I don't get to reply to right away. I don't see all of them as they come in because the videos that happen to have comments on them, some of them have a nice amount of comments and it's videos from like two, three months ago. So I do apologize. I did not realize that the last video that I uploaded speaking about the divorce between the black man and the black woman was cut off. So I now understand one of the comments on there. So this is going to be part two and I'll dive in just a little bit deeper. So I cut off in that video when I said that a lot of men are married to women that they don't like. And then they end up meeting a woman that they do like. And sometimes they end up cheating, whether it's physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, or physically and in that video i began to talk about how the modern day black woman uses it as a boasting right to say that i'm not my mother i'm not my grandmother when all that does is at you outside of the law and the law is representative by chokma which is feminine you can read this in the book of proverbs ecclesiastics and the sirach you you will begin to find that the feminine essence was removed out of the bible a lot of times but when you begin to look into hebraic culture you will know that the black woman is representation of the law and in the law you are built so when you begin to see these ashkenazis and some of these other converts have one of the boxes on their heads it's literally a representation now we, we're not going I'm talking to the paganism it's literally a representation of what's talked about in the oral tradition the law is a fence what did fred hammond say he said yeshua bar yosef be a fence all around me every day and when you keep the law you are inside the ark of safety and so as a woman when you begin to operate outside the law of safety everything that's in your home will be out of whack that's where the terminology happy wife happy life comes from it's not to begin to dismiss the 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 effect and the importance that the black man has in his household is to begin to say that as my father described his bride my late mother of 36 years that the woman is the fragrance and if the fragrance of a thing is off that's how you know that it's sick so a lot of women are off in their essence your spiritual ph balance needs to be checked baby and it's indicative even by the food that you eat the music that you begin to listen to the diet that you begin to take into when it comes to your reading your taste buds what it is that you do repetitively what it is that you feed yourself mentally spiritually and emotionally and the gut is the woman when we begin to talk about the woman's intuition people think that is something that's just made up no when you begin to look at the way that that Adam was was put to sleep, right? And wisdom, Hava was taken from his inward parts. And she was created and fashioned with that. So women have a high value to be intuitive. And this is because she represents as an interception, a line of defense before anything begins to get to the king before anything gets to our head to our husbands and so when a woman is off in her essence because she has removed herself from what it is that her origins is when we chase men and trust and believe if i say something i've been guilty of it before 
And even if I have not, I've seen it before. When you exude desperation. When we begin to wait for men. And I need y'all to do me a favor. In this video, tap. Tag Math Hoffa. I was going to do a reaction video with it. I'm, I'm going to have some, some reactions very soon. Math Hoffa um, had a little scrappy on his show recently. Y'all ain't even got to tag him because I don't even really be on that. Um, had a little scrappy on his show recently. And scrappy was talking about the discrepancies between himself, his mother, himself, his wife, and his mom and his wife and he began to talk about he, he referred to his mama he always called mama mama d but he called her cuz he said cuz hard man you you really can't talk to cuz cuz break down about something crying in one minute and then happy about it in, in the next he said my wife just as hard as me my wife a crip from compton in comparison to my mother and to my wife, I'm a sucker. And I ain't afraid to admit it. This is a black man crying out for love, for affection. They posted something to him stating this on, on the TV show and said that his wife was hard. Scrappy Bambi's marriage and mother-daughter, mother-son dynamic is actually seen a lot in the black community. I've seen it. Mama D was a woman who was a pimp and she sold drugs and did whatever it is that she had to take care of scrap. We see this repeated a lot in the black family dynamic. I believe that um, she's clearly a traumatized woman. A lot of us are. And so when you begin to look at these dynamics and you have a black man and not just him, we just going to deal with it holistically. We're going to use examples. When you have a black man, he was with the mother of his child, right? for years didn't do right by her she held him down blase blase they had their ups and their downs then enter ends another woman we're gonna exit out the shea factor then enter ends another woman and you have a woman like bambi and bambi told scrappy i'm hard because i had to fight for you that's not your job and I see a lot of now, a lot of narratives when men like, if they don't want to fight for your attention, that's not your job as a woman. I'm going to let y'all know this. If you are a woman and you meet a man, you just need to assume that it's a great possibility. It's eight times out of ten is somebody else that pre-existed before you, that he's romantically tied to or that he's sleeping with, has some interest in. You cannot feel as if just because you have entered into this man's life that he about to drop everybody for you. Because who are you? Who are you? What have you done to earn that? So the whole fighting thing as a woman shouldn't even exist because you should be focused on you and what you got going on and having some real conversations with this man and making it clear what you want. And if you see that you guys are not on the same page, that's when you make your exit. But women boast and brag about fighting and tussling. The fight should be spiritual. You should be fighting as a woman to pull down strongholds and magnets of generational curses, of fornication, of lust, of cervical cancer, of, of whatever, of divorce. In your family household, in your dynamic, but you're so worried about fighting for a man and trying to make him be what it is that he has proven that he is not. And so... When men have proven to us who they are as boyfriends and they've lied and they've cheated and we stay, we do ourselves a disservice. As I said, by mumbling, about complaining, about doing all of these other things. Why? You don't have a problem with it. You just like the sound of your own voice. You just don't like how, how you think and make you look. Who would know that this man was cheating on you if you ain't going to tell everybody? Because a lot of times the side chicks be quiet. Not all of them. We're going to talk about that, though, because we don't talk about that. Not all of them. 
And even if they don't, if you dealt with it once, you'll deal with it twice. That's, that's a common denominator. The third time, it's a pattern. So you have already set your standard for this man. You have shown him that, baby, this is clearly your proclivity. You got a lust problem, but I'm willing to deal with it. So how come when you decide to marry this man, and I'm all for women picking themselves up, don't get me wrong. I'm all for women saying, you know what, I have found my voice I have found myself. I am going to stand up. That infinite wisdom has come back to me. I'm going to leave. Let me put that in there. Because chirping likes to happen sometimes. And I don't, I'm not a fan of birds too much. Um, And you have shown him that you're willing to deal with his good, his bad, and his ugly. So when you get in a marriage with him and he's still doing these things, but he gave you his name, he coming home every night, people know that you his wife. A lot of times these men never promised you monogamy. They promised you marriage. And the two are not mutually exclusive. It's, it, it's a moral issue. It's a self-control issue. But black women, please answer this question for me. Why do you live with such a delusion that a black man is going to make you from a side chick to a wife and then be faithful to you? Why do you think a black man is going to have you be his girlfriend for all of these years and cheat on you? And then all of a sudden he gets his lust problem together. Then all of a sudden he respects you. Can we talk about the fact that a lot of times black women that are married to men and in relationships with men are in those relationships by default because a great amount of times they were given to you. You lucked into them because you waited, because you begged, because you was desperate, because somebody else walked away. And if a man loses a woman that he's not ready to walk away from, he going to make you pay for it. So a lot of y'all are paying for the heartache that he had to endure because you didn't know how to play your role. And I don't feel sorry for you. You reap what you sow. I'm really over feeling sorry for people getting cheated on. Men and, men and female. It don't make it right. But we have to begin to look psychologically. What's somebody laying with somebody else even got to do with you? And your inadequacies. Unless they've been coming and you telling you, I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy. I'm not this. I'm not that. And it's still no excuse. We still have to address the cause and effect. But please, stop lying and acting like cheating is your deal breaker. Because it's not. And you can't do what he do. Because you're a married woman. And if you step out, he step out. And she's single, that's fornication. You step out, that's adultery. That's Bible talk. Black men, I highly suggest that if you cannot afford to cheat, don't. And if you have not found it within yourself to tell a woman that I don't believe in monogamy, if your pockets cannot afford to take care of multiple women, you need to stop because you're making whores out of the daughters of Zion. You need to be able to take care of each woman the same way. And black woman, if you call yourself being with a man and you know he sleeps with other women and you don't want him doing anything for those other women, you're scum. Because he's given his essence, his seed, his life force, but he can't give his money. And this is how you know that black men are only love based off of what? They can provide. Comment down below, y'all. Thank you for coming back. Once again, this is Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. If you have not already done so, subscribe. Welcome back.